The first few elections I covered were all in the pre-electronic voting era. Remember, EVMs covered every Lok Sabha constituency only in 2004. Before that, it was ballot paper and ballot boxes that were the order of the day. Interestingly, in 1952, the first election in independent India, there were separate colored ballot boxes for each candidate. You stamped your vote for a candidate on ballot paper and then put it in a ballot box of your choice. Ballot boxes in that first election were moved across the country on camels, on horseback, the entire exercise stretching across several months. Himachal Pradesh, for example, voted in October 1951. The remaining states much later in 1952. Godridge and Boyce manufactured the ballot boxes for that first election. The company archives say 12.83 lakh ballot boxes were produced in their Vikroli factory in Mumbai in barely four months. The ballot papers for the election were printed at the Government of India Security Press in Nashik. The entire exercise was executed by a new body, the Election Commission, and it was headed by a remarkable institution builder, Sukumar Sen. A brilliant ICS officer, he was appointed as Chief Secretary of West Bengal in 1947 before being sent on deputation as Chief Election Commissioner. Sen didn't have an easy task ahead of him. Around 17.6 crore Indians were eligible to vote in that first election, more than 85% of whom could not read or write. To make it easier, each political party was then assigned a symbol. Since these voters could not read or write, they could at least vote for the party of their choice through symbols. It's a system that we still follow. In the US, Women, that to only white women initially, got the right to vote only in 1920, more than a century after the first presidential election in that country. With the party symbols allotted, the stage was set for the great experiment. Into the arena they stepped, candidates of every shade of political opinion. In India, from the very first election, every adult Indian, across gender, caste, region and community got the right to vote from the very first post-independence general election of 1952. In the 1962 Lok Sabha elections for which the election commission for the first time presented separate numbers for male and female voter turnout, women constituted a measly 46.7%. But by 2019, women voter turnout had shot up exponentially, up by nearly 20% to 67.18%. During the same period, male turnout also grew, but by only 5%, from 62.1% in 1962 to 67.08% in 2019. Women were actually now polling more in some parts of the country than men. The differential growth rate in voter turnout has resulted in a watershed moment in India's electoral history. In 2019, for the first time, women's turnout percentage in Lok Sabha elections was actually marginally higher than that of the men. Women power, or the power of 49, was well and truly here.